I would like to introduce you all to this beautiful little two-year-old boy. His name is Braxton Danker. Braxton is from Oklahoma, and he is forever two years old. Braxton deserves justice, and not just from the ones that took his life, which is his mother and his mother's boyfriend, but also he deserves justice from the judicial system, the actual judge that ruled over his murder trial. Let me tell you a little about Braxton. Braxton died on Mother's Day in 2018. This is his 19-year-old mother at the time. Her name, Judith Danker. Judith was charged with killing her son. The sheriff that arrived on scene on the night of Mother's Day 2018 said that Braxton had a diaper rash that had turned into a severe infection, and he went into cardiac arrest while he was being taken to the hospital. Braxton passed away on his way to the hospital. And the very next day, after Braxton's mother was arrested, a second arrest came, and this was of Judith's boyfriend, Christian Tyler Martzel. He was arrested the very next night in connection with Braxton's death. The Lincoln County officials said that Braxton suffered injuries to his buttocks, broken bones, open wounds, and it appeared that he had been beaten to death with some sort of object. It also appeared that the abuse that little two-year-old Braxton suffered at the hands of these two spanned for months, and he was only 24 months old. Now at this point, May the 16th, 2018, both Martzel and Danker were facing first degree murder charges. And here you will hear the 911 call that was placed by his mother on Mother's Day night. I went outside and I came back in and he wasn't breathing and I can't hear his heartbeat. And I okay, where's your, where's your address? I'm, um, I'm, I'm took off and I'm going to Integris. Dispatch tells 19-year-old Judith Danker to pull over near the county line and meet up with an ambulance. <laughs> Ma'am. Say that again. <laughs> Investigators say his body badly bruised and caught the attention of medics. Bruising all over the body. We have broken bones to the body. Deputies searched the home where his mother and 27-year-old Christian Tyler Martzall had been living. Neighbors say they thought the property was vacant. There was no running water. I still can't hardly believe it. I mean, if I had known anything like that had happened, I would have intervened or tried to, but I didn't know they lived there. Court documents state deputies found a belt used to hit the child inside the home. Assistant District Attorney Adam Painter says in his 10 years practicing law, this is the worst abuse and neglect he's seen. Numerous, numerous open wounds, very large open wounds. One uh, possible gangrene has already set in. Well, we were able to confirm that DHS was notified of this and cited a report, but it wasn't finished before the toddler died back in May. Medical experts cite multiple injuries stemming from months of abuse. Walking into court, Judith Danker and her boyfriend, Christian Tyler Martzall, each face a count of first degree murder. They're the couple nearest to the camera. Death penalty documents were filed yesterday. The results of the investigation revealed that Braxton had uh, suffered horribly the last few days of his life. Previous filings revealed the child died because of an injury to his head. Investigators say there was also a large wound on little Braxton Danker's body, and it appeared gangrene set in. A witness gave statements saying they saw both Danker and Martzall striking the child repeatedly about the body with a belt in the yard at a home in Wellston. The child had not been treated or seen by any wellness medical examination in approximately one year. The night Braxton died, his mother called 911 as she rushed him to Edmonds Integris Hospital. Both the defendants in this case were responsible for their injuries that led to his suffering and led to his death. And we believe that 
uh, the only way to truly seek justice for Braxton's life is to seek the death penalty. Marshall said that he never used corporal punishment to punish that child. As for Danker, she says that she hit the child with a shoe, plastic spoon, and belt. Obviously, the death penalty should have been sought here. I know many people do not believe in the death penalty, and I get that. But I do believe sometimes it's damn well needed. And this is one of those times. And I'm sure many of you have not even heard about little Braxton. But see, that's why I do this. I do this. The voiceless a voice in both of these pieces of trash that are the reason for his death have been incarcerated since. The trial jury happened in June of this year. And this piece of trash on the left, Tyler, Christian, whatever you want to call him, oh, he's out. Yeah. Time served. The mom's still in jail. She got 25 years. But you know what makes this even more horrific? And just like you will hear Braxton's grandfather say here in a few minutes, just to add insult to the injury, is the very damn judge that presided over this very extremely important jury trial. Yeah, what you're looking at here is absolutely the judge. Sure is. Looks like she's watching a video, right? On her damn phone. And this isn't during a break. Oh, no. No. She done this for the entire trial. Yes, she did. And her text, 500 of them to her bailiff that was sitting nearby. Well, her phone records were subpoenaed. And the things she was saying, can you believe she literally said, this shit is boring. This sucks. Sitting there, even, even texting about the prosecutor's genitalia. I wished I was kidding, but I'm not. And as you will see in just a moment, this little thing you're seeing on her phone here, it's one of those GIFs that moves, you know, like running, cutting jokes. She already made up her mind before she even heard any of the testimony or anything. Absolutely. And you're going to hear all that as well. As a matter of fact, there is a video of this and you're going to see that as well. Braxton Danker died on Mother's Day in 2018. Just two years old, his grandfather, David Nelson, says this is the grandson who never had a chance. We never really had a chance to spend time with him. I never got to throw the baseball. We never got to go fishing. Five years later, the man accused of killing the toddler went to court. Prosecutors asked jurors to find Christian Tyler Martzall guilty in the death of Braxton. The trial ended in a second degree manslaughter conviction. And him to be out on time served. And we hear now that he's been served a uh, uh, protection order against his own children. A red flag raised by the family. Another came a month after the trial when a news outlet, the Oklahoman, released video of the judge using her phone during the trial. And she didn't even hear the mother's testimony about how bad it really was. In the 51-minute video, you can see Judge Tracy Soderstrom texting and messaging and scrolling Facebook for minutes at a time. This happens during jury selection, opening statements, and testimony. I just broke down. I mean, me and my wife both did. It's just another thing, another insult on top of injury. The family plans to file a complaint against the judge. According to the Lincoln County Sheriff's Office, the Oklahoma Council of Judicial Complaints is investigating. Their office says they cannot comment. The Supreme Court Justice John Kane says he wants Lincoln County Judge Tracy Soderstrom taken off the bench. The 50-year-old texting her bailiff during the June trial of a two-year-old beaten to death in 2018. Kane saying Soderstrom had her mind made up. She believed the boyfriend of the child's mother was innocent. Texting that prosecutors just couldn't accept that a mom could kill their kid. So they went after the next person available and added, can I please scream liar liar? Mocking prosecutors asking, why does he have baby hands? They are so weird looking, saying he was also sweating through his coat. The judge also allegedly making crass comments about one of the prosecutor's genitals. In other messages, they allegedly accused a witness of not having teeth, being constipated, and a juror of wearing a wig. On the other hand, Soderstrom calling a testifying officer pretty, texting the bailiff, I could look at him all day, and describing the defense attorney as awesome, asking, can I clap for her? But Chief Kane's harshest criticism is the judge's apparent influence on the trial's outcome, never giving the jurors an opportunity to consider a second-degree murder. 
they handed down a manslaughter conviction and recommended he be released with time served. After the trial, a video of Soderstrom on her phone was leaked. She had cameras moved away, then put back, but asked for black privacy boxes to be put up over her desk. They're able to zoom in on her handwriting on the bench. In August, commissioners voting to remove them. I make a motion to remove the black spot from the judge's desk. All in favor say aye. Aye. We called Judge Soderstrom's attorney several times, but we never heard back. We also called the bailiff. She hung up. We called again twice. When a newspaper obtained courtroom video of Judge Soderstrom on the bench texting and scrolling through Facebook, even after asking jurors to power off their own phones. Judge Tracy Soderstrom, Soderstrom was presiding over the murder trial of Christian Martzall, accused of killing two-year-old Braxton Danker on Mother's Day. The jury found Martzall guilty on second-degree manslaughter and sentenced him to four years in prison with credit for time served. The state had asked for murder in the second degree, but the judge denied. Here's why this is all a problem. In the 47-page petition, the Oklahoma Supreme Court Chief Judge M. John Cain writes that Judge Sodderson exchanged some 500 texts with her bailiff during the trial. According to the document, those texts mocked the physical appearance of attorneys and jurors and says the judge used offensive language when talking about the state's attorneys, including crass remarks about one prosecutor's genitalia. The chief justice says the judge expressed bias in favor of the defendant and displayed gross partiality against the state. Here's some examples in that court filing. Claims during the trial, the judge texted her bailiff, quote, this expletive is boring. Texting about the defense attorney, quote, can I clap for her? She's awesome. While saying of the state's prosecutor, quote, he sucks, this is dumb, and quote, he looks constipated. Is that the O expletive face? End quote. At one point, the judge asks her bailiff if she could scream, quote, liar, liar. The chief judge of Oklahoma says the totality of the text give the appearance the judge believed the defendant was innocent and wanted him to be found not guilty. The chief judge says there are other examples that warrant Judge Shotterstam's permanent removal from the Lincoln County bench. Yep, so there you go. As you see, she is very busy. Uh, the mother's over there testifying, if that's what you want to call her, a mother. Um, as to why little Braxton passed away. She did get 25 years for allowing the abuse. But look at the judge. She seems very into this case, right? Now, I do have this 47-page petition. Another thing, this is her very first ever murder trial the first one, and it's for little two-year-old Braxton Danker. She had already made up her mind that Braxton's mother's boyfriend should not be found guilty, so he was released. He's out right now. Second-degree manslaughter, really? I don't even think this judge even heard any of the testimony. She was too busy looking at genitals and texting 500 text messages to her bailiff. Some of the witnesses even making derogatory comments. I don't think they have any teeth. Even the jurors, that juror is wearing a wig. It's, it's disgusting. And this is one judge that needs to be she was only put in that seat January the 9th of this year. January the 9th, 2023 is when she took the seat. In her very first murder trial, this is what she's doing. This shit is boring. Seriously? I don't even know what else to say. If you want to watch this entire video, this is basically all you're going to see. But you can find it on the Oklahoman page because they're the ones that leaked it and it should have been leaked. I looked her up when she was an attorney and didn't do a deep, deep dive into her, but basically the only thing lying, um, as an attorney was pretty much divorces, you know, so, I mean, I'm sure she had other things, but literally uh, about all I could find was on divorces. And so now she has her seat as a judge, 50 years old, and she's saying this shit is boring. 
it sucks. Um, they're even talking about BLT sandwiches. Yes. Okay, well, let me know what you think about this below. And if you live in Oklahoma, um, maybe you would like to get involved in this and having this judge in her seat taken. Like, she really deserved the seat that she has. I think not. And I think Braxton deserved a hell of a lot better than that. Thank you all so much for listening. And until next time, this is Unjustified. Thank you so much for watching and do not forget to subscribe, like, share, and leave us a comment below on your thoughts of this video. And until next time, this is Unjustified.